In the last video, we learned about the touched object that Formic maintains to let us know the visited fields in a form. In this video, let's use that object to improve the validation user experience. If you take a look at the formic.touched object, it maintains a key for every field. All we have to do now is render the error messages only if the field's error message exists and if the user has visited that particular field. Let's go back to VS Code and make this change. For the name field error message, let's add at the beginning formic.touched.name and and formic.errors.name only then render the error message. So only if the field has been visited and the error message exists, then show the error message. Let's do the same for the other two fields as well. This is going to be formic.touched.email and formic.errors.email. Finally, formic.touched.channel and formic.errors.channel. And that is pretty much it. Let's save the file and test it out in the browser. On page load, you can see that there are no error messages. Now I'm going to place my cursor in the name field. There is a value, so still no error message. I clear out the value. There is still no error message being displayed. And this is intentional. We are still interacting with the field. You can see that the touched object is still empty. The name field touched will be set to true only on the blur event. So if I click outside the field, touched.name is set to true. The condition to render the error message becomes true and the error message required is displayed. However, what is important is that we don't display the error messages for the other fields anymore. If I focus on the email field now and click out, only then do we see the corresponding error message. Similarly for channel field as well. So our YouTube form now has much better user experience when it comes to displaying error messages. To quickly summarize, what we have done is handle the on blur event of the input fields. We pass in a formic helper method called handle blur as the event handler. What this does is store the information on whether a particular field has been visited or not. And that information is stored in an object called touched. This touched object can then be used to conditionally render the error message for a particular field. This is pretty much the fundamentals about form validation with Formic in React. But as it turns out, Formic provides an alternate way of specifying the validation rules for any given form. Let's quickly take a look at that in the next video.